grade 12s, we are learning about chemical equilibrium. You already know that chemical equilibrium is reached when the rate of a forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction in a closed container. For example, chemical equilibrium is reached when hydrogen reacts with iodine to form hydrogen iodide in a closed container. Chemists use graphs to work out when equilibrium occurs by looking at the rates of the forward and reverse reactions or at the concentrations of the reactants or products in the closed container. Let's see what these graphs tell us. For the first graph of the rate versus time, the rate of the forward reaction is high at the start, but decreases after a while. At the same time, the rate of the reverse reaction starts from zero and then increases. After some time, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. The system is now in a state of chemical equilibrium. In the second graph, look very carefully at the concentrations of each of the reactants at the start. Notice that you are given 5 moles of hydrogen and 4 moles of iodine. The first step in sketching the graph is to calculate the concentration of the hydrogen and iodine at the start. Remember, concentration of a gas is the number of moles present divided by the volume of the container in decimeters cubed. We are given moles and told that the volume of the container is one decimeter cubed. So, the concentration of hydrogen is 5 moles per decimeter cubed. And the concentration of iodine is 4 moles per decimeter cubed. Let's mark these on the vertical axis of the concentration versus time graph. The hydrogen is marked in blue at 5, the iodine in red at 4 and the hydrogen iodide in green at zero. It is very important to recognize that the concentration of the reactants decreases and the product concentration increases in the same ratio as shown in the balanced chemical equation. For this reaction, the ratio is one is to one is to two. At the start of the reaction, the rate of the forward reaction is high, so more reactants will be used up and more products will form in the first time interval. For sketching my graph, I have chosen a time interval of half a minute. Let's say one mole of hydrogen is used up. Can you predict how much iodine reactant will be used up and how much hydrogen iodide will form? I am going to show you by plotting the points on my graph. See how the concentration of hydrogen decreases from 5 moles per decimeter cubed to 4 moles per decimeter cubed. At the same time, the iodine decreases by one mole per decimeter cubed from four to three moles per decimeter cubed. Both the reactants decrease by one mole per decimeter cubed because the ratio between hydrogen and iodine is one to one. But the ratio between hydrogen and hydrogen iodide is one to two. So while both reactants decrease by one mole per decimeter cubed, the product, hydrogen iodide, increases from zero to two moles per decimeter cubed in the same time interval. In the next half minute time interval, only half a mole of hydrogen and iodine are used up and one mole of product is formed. In the next time interval, less reactants are used up and less product molecules form. Notice from three and a half minutes to five minutes, 
the lines on the graph are all horizontal lines parallel to each other. We say that chemical equilibrium is established. We can't see any macroscopic changes, but chemists can measure the concentration of reactants and products to find out when this chemical equilibrium is reached. Seems easy enough. Graphs of reaction rate or concentration against time show us when equilibrium occurs. But what factors actually determine the position of the equilibrium? We have seen that a dynamic phase equilibrium is set up in a closed container containing liquid water and water vapor. When the temperature of the system is high, more of the contents are in the vapor phase than when the temperature is low. So we know that temperature is one of the factors that can influence the position of equilibrium. Are there other factors? Yes, we also know that if we try to dissolve lots of salt in water, eventually some of the salt crystallizes as a solid. So another factor that influences the equilibrium position is the concentration of ions in a solution. We will see in another lesson that if you have a reaction vessel containing gases, that a change in pressure also changes the equilibrium position. Now Amira will explain another concept called the equilibrium constant. Let's begin by looking at the special formula chemists use to define the equilibrium constant. Here is a general chemical equation in which two gases react together to form two different gaseous products. We write the equation as A moles of A reacts with B moles of B to form C moles of C and D moles of D. In this reaction, A and B are reactants, and C and D are products. And the lowercase letter in front of each substance indicates the ratio of moles reacting. Remember, at chemical equilibrium, the concentration of both reactants and products is constant. Chemists use a square bracket as a shorthand to indicate concentration of a substance. So, this symbol reads the concentration of A in mole per decimeter cubed. Now, let's have a look at the special formula for the equilibrium constant expression, or Kc, for this general chemical equation. Here it is. It looks quite complex, but we can simplify it. Firstly, notice that Kc is a special ratio. On the numerator, we have the concentration of the product C and D multiplied together. In the denominator, we see the concentration of the reactants A and B multiplied together. Secondly, notice that the values in front of each product and reactant are used as exponents in the expression. We can use this general expression to write down the equilibrium constant for specific reactions. As our first example, let's examine the reaction of hydrogen and nitrogen to form ammonia in a closed container when chemical equilibrium is reached. Here is the balanced chemical equation. It tells us that one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. Nitrogen and hydrogen are the reactants, and ammonia is the product. The reactants and products are all gases. This means that this is a homogeneous chemical equilibrium because all the substances are in the same state. We know that the expression for the Kc 
is the concentration of products multiplied together over the concentration of reactants multiplied together. Therefore, Kc equals concentration of ammonia to the power 2 from the balanced chemical equation. Over the concentration of nitrogen to the power 1 times the concentration of the hydrogen to the power 3. Can you write the expression for Kc for the following reaction? Oxygen reacts with hydrogen chloride to produce water and chlorine. Did you get this? Products in the numerator, reactants in the denominator, and ratio numbers now used as exponents. It will come with practice. This reaction is a homogeneous reaction because all the substances are gases. Now we know how to calculate the equilibrium constant, but for a particular reaction, is it really a constant value under all circumstances? That's a good question. When values for the equilibrium constant are given in textbooks, it is often the value at 25 degrees Celsius. The equilibrium constant does change with temperature, so it is important to quote the temperature at the same time. In industry, reactions often take place at high temperatures in closed containers, such as in the Haber process for the production of ammonia. Chemists need to know the value of the equilibrium constant at the temperature of the reaction. In this case, the temperature of the reaction is 450 degrees Celsius. It's very useful to get more practice in working with the equilibrium constant, so please do a lookout for the second part of this lesson called Using the Equilibrium Constant. There are questions for you to try in the Chemical Equilibrium Task video. Also look out on our website www.mindsearch.co.za forward slash learn for more details on this series. Goodbye.